Hello everyone, I'm Sean O'Neill with Eli Lilly and I'm happy to present the 2020 Alliance for Aging Research Distinguished Public Service Award. The award is given each year to a Republican member of Congress who is leading the way on policies encouraging medical research, innovation, and care to benefit Americans as they grow older. This year's award honors Congressman Gus Villarakis, who has represented Florida in Congress since 2007. Through his leadership on the House Energy and Commerce Committee, Congressman Bill Arrakis has been an advocate for disease research and care issues that disproportionately impact older adults. He serves as an active co-chair on the House Congressional Caucus on Parkinson's disease and has spoke personally about his family's experience with PD when the Alliance released the silver book, Parkinson's disease, with the Michael J. Fox Foundations for Parkinson's research. Over his career, Congressman Bill Arrakis has worked to improve mental health and community care for our nation's veterans. He has sponsored legislation to require Medicare to cover hearing aids for older adults, ease the process for older adults transitioning into Medicare, and co-introduced legislation to help coordinate state, local, and federal agencies' efforts that provide older adults with streamlined testing and care during the pandemic. Recently, Congressman Bill Arrakis introduced legislation to allow Medicare and Medicaid to reimburse for behavioral health services delivered via telehealth. The legislation seeks to address mental health provider shortages, which in some parts of the country delay patients from seeing psychiatrists for months. He's also supported bipartisan legislation to increase the ability of nursing homes to utilize telehealth for virtual visits for residents unable to see their friends and loved ones during the pandemic. Most recently, he's also advocated to increase awareness and reduce the stigma associated with COVID-19, always in support of what the science says. Congressman Bill Arrakis, it's wonderful to be here with you today and present the Distinguished Public Service Award to you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that very much. Uh, I do have some prepared remarks as well. Our seniors, do really represent the greatest generation, that's for sure. And I believe we owe it to them to do all we can to empower them to live life to the fullest while providing a safety net for those who may need additional help. First and foremost, I believe we must help our seniors during this pandemic. We want to make sure that each state is following the CDC and CMS guidelines for keeping vulnerable populations particularly those in long-term care facilities safe. And I think we've done a good job here in the state of Florida. I've co-authored the Protecting the Health of America's Older Adults During COVID and Beyond Act, which will fill the gaps by fostering collaboration among sectors, including the identification and dissemination of evidence-based practices to assess the most vulnerable older adults limit exposure of adult, uh, older adults and their caregivers to the COVID-19, of course, and better care for older adults who are infected. Additionally, the Health Healthy Aging Grant Program through the CDC created in this bill would support local and state public health departments to promote older adult health and well-being, so very important as well as provide resources to this vulnerable community. Additionally, I've supported massive increases to the Meals on Wheels program to make sure more seniors have access to nutritional meals uh, throughout the pandemic. We've also closed the Donut Hall, which was an important step to help seniors. We must also work to ensure the long-term sustainability of Medicare and Social Security. We also must protect against scamming behaviors. Last year, we passed, the tra we passed the TRACED Act, which has reduced robocalls by 60% in the past six months. Congratulations again. Thank I you. would like to ask you a few questions uh, on sure. the work you're being recognized for. And I think you started to touch on some of these, but giving your leadership on promoting policies that encourage medical research, innovation, and care to uh, benefit Americans as they as they grow older. What are some of the most pressing issues you see now for older adults? Well, uh, first of all, you know the COVID nineteen, obviously, uh, and the, the the isolation issue. 
uh, and that's why it's important that uh, they have access to to mental health uh, treatment. I, I'm concerned, uh, you know, when an elderly patient uh, has Alzheimer's or, for example, Parkinson's, uh, you know, the caregivers, uh, you get caregivers, and, and even if you have long-term care insurance, it doesn't cover everything. Uh, and, and that's so important. There are a lot of issues facing our elderly, and I, that's why I wanted to I want to have this uh, this separate select committee in the House like we did. My, my father, who served for many years in Congress, uh, was part of that select com- committee early on. You know, you talked, about, you talked a little bit about your, your efforts to allow Medicare and Medicaid to reimburse for yeah. behavioral health services through telehealth or in remotely. Why is this such an important issue for healthy aging in your mind? They need to get access. And a lot of times they may feel more comfortable at home. And and a lot of times they can be seen frequently, uh, more frequently anyway, uh, at home. Uh, And and sometimes, you know, in a lot of cases, you got to do the face to face. But uh, I think that if they're in touch with their healthcare provider, on a regular basis, uh, you know, even for, for dietary reasons. Uh, that's so very important as well. You know, thank you for your ongoing support to the nation's veterans, something that's, that's critical. Uh, what can you tell us about the VA hospitals and how they've been handling COVID-19 care? Well, they've done a good job in my area. I will tell you that, and we do talk to the secretary of the VA frequently. But it, our veterans are getting a little restless because they want to go to their outpatient clinics uh, instead of traveling to a hospital. And the telehealth is working. We get a lot of re- reviews on the on the telehealth, but uh, they prefer to see their their patient, their their doctor, in a lot of cases uh, at their local outpatient clinic because it's much closer, much more convenient. It's it's kind of like a neighbor neighborhood. Uh, clinic and uh, and uh, you know they they feel like they're part of it and uh, we have to take care of our veterans that's been my number one priority that's excellent and uh, really appreciate that again and you know one of the things we were able to catch up with a little bit is is you talked about your family and uh, how you all interact and the importance of family and some of your uh, how you celebrate what have you learned from your own family about healthy aging and, and how do you healthy aging? Healthy? Well, you know, again, being around your grandparents uh, for, for years, there's nothing better than getting exposing your children to, uh, to the previous generation. I grew up in a small community, a small Greek community, as a matter of fact, in Florida. And, uh, it, it was a, it prepared me for life, and it also prepared me for Congress specifically uh, to help out our elderly. That's excellent, and um, you know I think a lot of your experiences we all can relate to with uh, uh, our families aging, with with exposing uh, our uh, children and and young family members to them to. To learn, as you as you mentioned, and and to just witness, uh, learn from them, and learn and witness uh, the process and and uh, the camaraderie and help that comes along with family and and uh, is important. To and the, you know, some of our grandparents, in my case, my grandparents were immigrants, and they appreciate this country so much uh, because they saw what it was like on the other side. They didn't have opportunities uh, in their home countries. So they came over here for opportunities for themselves, but more importantly for their children and grandchildren. So, you know, again, that's the American dream. That's the American story. And uh, we're very fortunate to live in this great country. And and speaking to our grandparents about these issues uh, and our parents, uh, it makes us more proud to be Americans. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Uh, Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you so much.